thank you. Who thought when they saw the name Chris Middleton they thought of the Milwaukee Bucks yeah. basketball player? Yeah. So who, who was a little disappointed that I'm not that basketball player? You were disappointed. Y'all are disappointed? Man, I'm sorry. It's kind of been, it's been tough for me, you know, for a while. Whoa, that just got bright. But, uh, you know, most people didn't know Chris Middleton, the basketball player. Maybe some of you were like, I don't even know who Chris Middleton, the basketball player, is now. But then when the Bucks won the championship this past year, everywhere I speak, you see like, oh, Chris Middleton's a speaker? People are like, oh my gosh, did we really get the NBA all-star Chris Middleton? And he did, he just got regular Chris Middleton. But hey, I've been bitten by a lion, so that's pretty cool. Um, it was a baby lion, so I kind of lied a little bit, but like, it's cool. Um, hey, I want to give a, few, a couple of shout outs before I get going. Uh, first, I want to give a shout out to Mr. Maletta, who was my teacher when I was in middle school. We got Mr. Mo fans. You still going by Mr. Mo? Or is Mr. Still, still going by that? And I also want to give a shout out to my guy, Clayton. Clayton, where are you at? Clayton! Clayton's in my small group. Church and man, he's a stud, and so it's fun being here. Um, so I'm excited to be here. I wanted to start uh, my time this morning uh, talking about the time that I went to Catalina Island. Has anyone heard of Catalina Island before? So it's about a mile off of uh, Newport Beach, California. So I went to school in Southern California, and Catalina Island is this island, um, and you can go there and um, do a big backpacking trip. So it was my spring break of my freshman year of college. And me and my friends were like, hey, let's go hike the Trans-Catalina trip, or trail. And so we had this big trip planned out, and I was doing all the research. I was Googling what Catalina Island looked like. I was looking at all the pictures. I was looking at all the views that eventually I would see. I was reading the history of Catalina Island. And so that looked like um, all the movies that have been filmed at Catalina Island, some movies that you've seen have been filmed at Catalina Island. Um, interestingly enough, Catalina Island it is home to a bunch of buffalo, and the reason there's buffalo on the island in the middle of the ocean is because in the 50s, Hollywood brought a bunch of buffalo there for a movie, and then now they just, they just left them there. And now there's tons of buffalo all over Catalina Island. And so I did all this research about Catalina Island. I did all this research about the views that I would see. I did all this research about the history of Catalina Island, about the buffalo, all the things that I would experience at Catalina Island. But man, everything I read about it didn't measure up to what I actually saw. So I got to Catalina Island and I experienced things that I had never experienced. I experienced walking through the valley at Catalina Island and I was walking through like 30 buffalo. It was honestly terrifying. Because I was like, hey, you can either go three miles around or you walk through this buffalo and they might charge you. And so like, I'm like walking through this like, pile of buffalo, like just trying not to die. I have my hand on my back ready to just like run. But I actually walked through the valley of the buffalo. I actually got to see the views that I had read about, that I had Googled, and I actually got to stand on top of a mountain. And I was actually above the clouds. Imagine this, being on top of a mountain, above the clouds, and you can see California behind you, and then you look out and there's the Pacific Ocean. All you see is clouds with the sunset coming over. And in that moment, I realized something that's true, not just about Catalina Island, but it's true about our lives. That it's different to actually know about something and actually knowing it. You see, I knew about the views that I had seen. I had Googled the pictures. I had read the history. I knew what a buffalo looked like. I knew about those things, but it is something completely different to actually know and experience those things, to be face to face with a buffalo, to actually be on a mountaintop, seeing clouds below you with the sun coming down with the state of California behind you. And that's true of your life, and it's true of my life, that it's possible to know about God but not actually know God. It's possible at Cornerstone Christian School, it's possible in my life to know about God, but actually not really know Him. You know all the facts, you know the Bible test answers, but you don't actually know God. 
And so I want to go to a passage of scripture. It's in Matthew 17. And it's an amazing passage of scripture where the disciples, they get to see who Jesus really is. They have a moment where everything they've known about Jesus is, is kind of thrown to the side because they get to actually know Jesus. They actually get to see Jesus. They actually get to experience Jesus. And here's what's true about your life and true about my life. God didn't create you so that you would know facts about him. He didn't create you to take Bible tests. He created you so that you would know God and walk with God and enjoy God. The Westminster Confession says that we were made to know God and enjoy him forever. And so that's what the disciples do to experience. It says this in Matthew 17. In Matthew 17, it says, after six days, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, and the brother of James, and led him up on a mountain by themselves. There he was transfigured, which just means transformed, before them. And his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. And just then, there appeared before them Moses and Elijah talking with Jesus. And Peter said to Jesus, Lord, if it is good for us to be here, if you wish, I will put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. And while he was still speaking, a bright cloud covered them. And a voice from the cloud said, this is my son. Imagine that. You literally hear an audible voice. This is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. And when the disciples heard this, they fell face down to the ground, terrified. Because, hello, they weren't just reading about the buffalo. They were seeing the buffalo. They were seeing the real glory of Jesus face to face. But Jesus came and touched them and said, get up. Don't be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus. And as they were coming down the mountain, Jesus instructed them, don't tell anyone what you have seen until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. Y'all see what happened is happening in the story? Jesus had done a bunch of teaching about who he was. The disciples were slowly starting to figure out who Jesus was. But in this moment, Peter, James, John, they actually get to see who Jesus is. He takes them up on this mountain. And on this mountain, something crazy happens. Jesus, who on earth was someone who just looked like you and me. The scripture says he had an average looking appearance. He was just your regular guy. But you guys know that Jesus, doesn't look, Jesus wasn't just a regular guy. He was God in human form. And up on this mountain, Jesus gives Peter, James, and John a glimpse of his glory. And it says that um, his face shined like the sun, that his clothes were, were white as light, and he was shining, and they got a small picture of the true glory of Jesus, that Jesus wasn't just this regular guy, but he was the glorious Savior, the Son of God in human form. They get a picture of what Jesus actually looks like, and how did they respond? They got on their knees and they were shaking a little bit. They were terrified because they were like, we have never seen glory like this. And what the disciples are experiencing is similar to what I experienced on Catalina. That just like when I was on Catalina Island, I knew all about it. But I didn't actually know it and experience it until I saw it. Until I saw the glory of the sunset over this um, just layers of clouds below me. I didn't know it until I was face to face with the buffalo. In the same way that the disciples, they didn't really get the full picture until they saw the glory of who Jesus really is. And my question for you this morning is, do you know about God? Or do you actually know God? Because there's a huge difference. I know we're in this, you guys are in a theme called Foundations of Faith, and you have different people coming in and telling their story, and really this message is my story, because my story is pretty similar to y'all's story. I grew up at a Christian school. I grew up going to church. I grew up doing well in my Bible classes. I knew the answers. I could say the answers in small group, right, Clayton? You can say the answers in small group. You got them. But uh, I, I was that kid. I, I knew all about God. 
But I remember when I got to about y'all's age, it was seventh grade maybe, I started having real doubts about, do I actually believe this? I remember researching different religions and, and, and looking up different faiths. I remember thinking, man, do I just believe this because I was raised at a Christian school? Do I really believe this? Or was I just, grow, did I just grow up in the church? Did I just have parents who believed this? Or do I actually believe this? I remember the moment for me, it was actually Christmas Eve 2011, so 11, a little over, a little over 10 years ago, where for the first time I feel like I didn't just know about God, I didn't just know the answers, but for the first time I feel like I saw the glory of God, where I experienced his love in a way that wasn't just like, oh, I can tell you that God is love, but I actually knew for the first time that man, God loves me. And my question for you this morning is, do you know about him? Could you get the, the, the answer on the test right that says God is blank, and you would say God is love? Or do you actually know? Do you actually experience the love for yourself? Because that is the season of life that you guys are all in. You're in middle school. You are at the age where you can decide to take some ownership of, my, of your faith, saying, man, I don't want this to just be my parents' faith. I don't want this to be my grandma's faith. I don't want this to be my teacher's faith. I don't want this to be Cornerstone's faith. I want this to be my faith. And that's what's available to everyone in this room today, saying, I don't want to just know about God, but I actually want to know God myself. I love this passage of scripture where it says, Jesus says after they walk down the mountain, he says, don't tell anyone what you have seen until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. And ultimately, that's what Jesus does. That he goes down this mountain where he showed the disciples his glory, but when he goes down the mountain, eventually, he starts walking towards a cross. He walks towards a cross, and you guys know the story. He died for every single person in this room's sins, including my own. Even my sins would be an insurmountable amount of sins, but imagine everyone just in this room sins. Jesus died for all of them. He suffered. He um, was tortured. He stopped breathing and died. His heartbeat stopped. Why? Because Jesus wanted a way for you to be in a relationship with him. Jesus didn't die for your sins. He didn't raise from the dead, defeating evil and death so that you could do well on your Bible class. I hope you all have A's in your Bible class. That would be amazing. He didn't die just so you could sit in chapel week after week. No, he died because he wanted you to know him and to walk with him. And so that's the invitation this morning. I want you guys to think about, do you know about God or do you know God? And I believe that in this age, man, y'all have a powerful opportunity to decide. I don't want to just know the answers, but I want to actually walk with God. I actually want to be in relationship with God. I want to know him personally. And if you're like, man, what does that even look like? And good news, you got some teachers around here. I know a lot of y'all are amazing churches. I was talking to some of the eighth graders at Simpson Wood, y'all are at North Point. We got people at Passion City. We got people at PCBC. We got people um, at all different amazing churches. Talk to your, your pastor, your student pastor, and say, hey, I want to actually know God. Because that is at the, in, the invitation is in front of you today. That you can not just know about him, but you can know him. And my prayer for you, and I'm about to pray and wrap up, is that you would experience the miracle of one foot. You're like, what's the miracle of one foot? The miracle of one foot is this, and it's my prayer for all of you, and I'm about to pray for it, that every single person in this room would have a faith that doesn't just stay in your head, but like the disciples, like Peter, like James, like John, they experienced the miracle of one foot. In eighth grade, that's when I experienced the miracle of a foot, where it didn't just stay in my head, but it traveled one foot down from my head to my heart. And that's my prayer for you guys, that it wouldn't just be a, something you know the answers to, but it's actually something that burns in your heart, that you love God, that you know God, and you want to walk with God. So I'm going to pray. You guys can bow your heads. And that's my prayer for you guys this morning. Lord, thank you that there's people in this room, God, who are 
have just different stories. There's some people that the miracle of a foot has already happened, God, and they, they, they truly know you and walk with you. God, praise you for that. Or there's some students who were like me when I was in middle school. They have doubts. They have questions. They don't know if they believe what they believe. And Lord, I pray that you would come near them, that they would seek you and that they would find you, Father. And Lord, I pray for the, the student in here today at Cornerstone that maybe has always been around you, they could say all the answers, but God, really what you need to do in their life and what they need in their life is to not just know about you, but they need to actually know you. I pray that they would take a step and say, I want to go all in. I want to not just keep this in my head. I want to keep this in my heart. So I'm praying that for these students, that it wouldn't just be a Bible test. It wouldn't just be a chapel credit or something I need to go to on Sundays because my parents drive me there. But Lord, that you would become everything. And like Peter, James, and John, they would catch a glimpse of your glory. So I pray this all in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Amen.